So right towards the tail end of 2021, we saw the release of Eilish by Billie Eilish. And this was an anticipated fragrance for me because I read the note breakdown and it sounds like a beautiful gourmand, although the official olfactive classification is an amber vanilla, but I do like a lot of those sweet tendencies and fragrances, and from what I gathered, it's a fairly unisex composition, and so in today's episode, I'm excited to give you my thoughts on the brand new Eilish by Billie Eilish, so make sure to stay tuned. begin this review and I tell you all about Eilish by Billie Eilish, what it smells like, how well it performs, also if I can compare it to anything else that I've tried in the past. I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on the bell icon and of course give this video a thumbs up if you take something of value from today's perfume review. Now I had originally discovered this fragrance several months ago or I received word that this fragrance was being released several months ago and so I went to buy it and it was sold out unfortunately and so I joined the waiting list from the official website and then recently I would say about a week and a half ago I got an email saying that it was back in stock I purchased it immediately and it actually shipped pretty quickly. And so I initially tried this fragrance about a week ago, I would say, and I've been wearing it ever since, just a little bit on the hands here and there to try it out. I gave it a few full wearings. And so this is certainly a gourmand perfume that was made in collaboration with Billie Eilish. And of course, I applaud her and her musical career. And I definitely had some of her songs stuck in my head. Uh, I think she's very talented. She has a great voice. And then in the case of this perfume, I'm also kind of addicted to this too. And so as a gourmand lover, this does feature a lot of notes and accords that I'm particularly fond of. And so when you take a look at the note breakdown, you have sugar, you have red berries, orange, you have vanilla, cacao, some spices, a touch of rose in the heart. And then of course, in the base, you have amber, musk, and a few other ingredients that really create this cohesive picture of the perfume. And um, this one is certainly a unique vanilla fragrance in the sense that the vanilla in here is so strong. And from what I've gathered from articles that I've read and I think even short clips that I've watched, um, Billie Eilish was directly involved in the creation of this fragrance, which is something that you don't see that often with a lot of celebrity perfumes. They usually just sign off on it and that's that. And they use their name to sell units. But in the case of this particular perfume, I recall seeing or reading uh, Billie Eilish saying that it's very uh, nostalgic for her and it's a scent that is very sentimental and that's the beauty of perfumes. It brings you back to a better time sometimes when you were younger, had fewer responsibilities in your life. Well, in any case, I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance. Let's start things off with the presentation. So of course, this is an amber vanilla perfume and it certainly opens up with a lot of amber and a lot of vanilla. I am getting a lot of a molecule called ethyl vanillin and it's very smooth, it's certainly sweet and it has a lot of those characteristically vanillic tendencies but I think it's the spices in here that kind of give it a little bit of a competitive edge when comparing it to other vanilla based perfumes in the industry and on the market. Of course, there's Vanille Incense by Talia Cologne. There's also Fire at Will by Jovoy London. So you have all of these um, or Jovoy Paris, I should say, you have all of these incredible vanilla based fragrances. And I think that, you know, they have a tendency of going in a few different directions. Now here we do have an amber accord residing in the base. And amber is usually a combination of resins like benzoin and labdanum. But you also have a touch of vanilla in there as well. This is really strong on the vanilla. So I would say this is like 80% vanilla and then 20% resins, whether that be benzoin or labdanum, but 
this is certainly sweet leaning. Now, I think what the red berry note or accord in the opening does is it adds this youthful component to the fragrance. And so it opens up very bright, youthful, a little jubilant. I know it says that there's orange in here according to a website I found online. I'm not getting a lot of a citrusy element from this fragrance. I feel like it goes straight into the sweetness, which for a lot of people is going to be a good thing. And I think it kind of retains those gourmand properties for a long, 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 long time into the dry down of this perfume. Now, in terms of longevity, I got about seven to eight hours on my skin and it was sweet the entire way through. Now, there is something to be said about the note of cacao or cocoa, depending on how it's listed, but a lot of times it's the same aroma molecules that are contributing to both notes. And so they, it kind of has a tendency of making the fragrance smell a little bit powdery. I don't find that necessarily to be the case in this fragrance, perhaps just a touch, but it could be some of those floral elements that contribute to that as well. And so I know it says that there's rose in here. I don't get too much of a floral heart from this fragrance. I really think it's more about that sugary component, the spicy vanilla with the cacao, and then a very faint amber, more in the wheelhouse of a vanilla rather than an amber, even though vanilla contributes to the synthesis of the amber accord. So my thing is this, if you're a fan of vanilla perfumes, and if you're a fan of Billie Eilish, I think the two are gonna check off some really important boxes for you. I think if you're a fan of Billie Eilish, but you don't like sweet perfumes, then I think this one might not necessarily be in your wheelhouse. However, if you are a lover of gourmand fragrances, as I happen to be, I think you're gonna love this one. Now, of course, there are a lot of really benchmark, really good vanilla-based fragrances, uh, like Ani by Nishane. I also mentioned Vini and Sensei, even Imperium by Electimus London. These are some of my favorite vanilla-based perfumes. Now, in the case of Eilish by Billie Eilish, I also think this is a solid vanilla-based perfume, but I don't think it ever becomes too complex. And so I think if you're looking for something with simplicity, something that's not going to take you on this long-winded olfactive journey, then you have something that's very simple, straightforward, but also, as the singer said, very nostalgic. And so I can't necessarily compare it to a vanilla ice cream cone or a dessert that I used to have when I was a kid but of course when I know vanilla when I smell it and this is an overdose of vanilla in many ways I know on an online fragrance forum people were comparing it to I think warm vanilla sugar by Bath and Body Works and I do own that fragrance and I can say that yes there is actually a very strong connection to that fragrance, but I think also when you're playing around with vanilla, once it's used in a certain concentration, it really takes over the composition, and I think that that's what's happening in the case of this perfume. All in all, a well-done vanilla perfume, a, a nice level of complexity, but again, nothing overbearing, nothing that is going to confuse the consumer in any way. I think it's very tastefully done, and I think the proportions are just right for somebody who's looking for a vanilla perfume. If that's your thing, definitely go for it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I do find this to be moderately unique. I think vanilla is such a ubiquitous note in the perfume industry, and so I can kind of see this appealing to a younger audience. And so in terms of the overall smell, you know what they say, vanilla is an aphrodisiac. So I think anybody is going to love this and love smelling it in the air. It's a very pleasant, very sort of agreeable scent, but I think it's probably going to cater to a younger clientele uh, just on account of the overdose of sweetness, if you will. And of course, when comparing it to brands like Aqualina that have fragrances like Pink Sugar and many flankers for Pink Sugar, Sugar, these fragrances typically do well among a younger clientele. In terms of the longevity, like I said, seven to eight hours, uh, not 78, seven to eight hours. In terms of the projection, I think this one projects really well 
well for the first hour of application, slightly beyond an arm's length as well for the first half hour, didn't start to sit closer to the skin until about that three to three and a half hour mark, and it didn't fully become a skin scent until the six hour mark. And so of course, this is a fragrance that is comprised primarily of base notes. And what you're seeing is that they do have a tendency of lingering a long time in the fragrance. So the longevity is very good. Projection is not the loudest, but I think it's an appropriate amount of projection given the profile of the fragrance. In terms of the versatility, I think it's perfectly unisex. I think men or women can wear this one very comfortably. Perhaps it leans a little bit feminine on account of the sweetness, but I know a lot of men's fragrances that are very, very sweet many of which are actually much sweeter than this one. And so perfectly unisex. Again, I think this one is going to appeal to somebody who's a little bit younger. I think this one would be great for probably every season except for the summer. I think especially if it's like above 100 degrees Fahrenheit on account of the sweetness, it can become a little bit cloying. And I can see this one being worn formally and casually. In terms of the presentation, I think it's a very unique presentation, very timeless, a little bit inspired by Salvador Dali. Um, I know there are a few other bottles that many of which I own, as a matter of fact, uh, but many of which I tried and they have a very similar aesthetic with the uh, monochromatic box. Um, and of course the shape of the bottle resembling different body parts. So my final verdict is, are you a fan of Billie Eilish? Do you like sweet perfumes? Are you in the market for a new fragrance? It's currently in stock. So I would say check it out. The price is reasonable. The only thing I'm going to say is don't waste your money on auction websites like eBay. I saw people selling it well over a hundred bucks. And if you have a little bit of patience and if for some reason it does go out of stock again, just sign up to the mailing list, be patient, wait about a month or so, um, because that's really all I had to wait, I think, uh, for this one to become in stock again. And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me today. That was my review of Eilish by Billie Eilish perfume for, I guess it's marketed for men and women. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's unisex. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or if you took something of value from this review, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on the bell icon and give this video a thumbs up if you like this type of content. It will also help to put my videos in front of a lot of other people on the platform. And so thank you so much for helping me with that. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.